Well, it's been a slow burn, but all of a sudden large parts of Australia have exploded in indignation about the activities of mining and gas companies on the hunt for untapped resources. If only they could keep their activities to the spots where no one wants to live. The anger even spread to suburban Sydney this week with news that an energy company was planning to start drilling for coal seam gas within five kilometres of the CBD. But will this uprising overturn the deeply entrenched law that buried resources wealth belongs to the nation and that property rights don't extend far below the topsoil? Neil Woolrich reports. From outback Queensland to the Hunter Valley in New South Wales and through to Sydney's inner suburbs, anti-mining protests are growing louder. They're angry as the rush to tap into the booming coal seam gas business in particular creeps onto fertile farming land and now some prime Sydney real estate. And it's getting politicians into a tangle as well. If you don't want something to happen on your land, uh, you ought to have a right uh, to say no. I had something to say about that yesterday and uh, again I'm happy to let that stand. I don't think Tony Abbott was suggesting for one minute that we should overturn hundreds of years of common law uh, that's been well established in this country. Landowners are not just worried about the environment, but the degree of control they have over what happens to their properties. It's quite appalling to find that you really only own the top of the ground of where you live, that you don't own anything that's underneath it. So to find that they had their rights to be able to come and dig here was um, a bit gobsmacking. How's your day been? Oh, a good day out there? Kate and Alan Tubbs train harness racing horses near Bacchus Marsh, west of Melbourne. They bought the vacant property in 1989, but found out a month ago that a mining company had rights to explore for coal on their property and many others in the district. We, good girl. They have to mediate with us and pay compensation if they want to cut the fence and come in to do their exploration work. Um, but considering that we're on a, an agricultural site and that we've got harness horses here, that sh to set up a drill site on our place really isn't an option. The guiding principle in each state and territory is that natural resources belong to the community and should be exploited unless there's a compelling reason not to. Once a minister grants an exploration licence, it's up to the landowner and miner to agree on access, including compensation. If an agreement can't be reached, the matter can go to arbitration and then the courts. If the laws are given the opportunity to run their course, I think they do work well. No, they work best, of course, if the parties can reach an agreement. Um, less well if it becomes an adversarial process, but that's always the case within the adversarial process. There's a long history in Australia of resource companies achieving um, uh, access agreements with landholders concerned and this has been happening for, for decades so I think the process on the whole has been working. Clearly, there are some areas where perhaps it's not working as well as it might um, but what we do tend to see reported are the areas where there is a greater degree of concern. The whole issue here is to treat landowners with respect uh, and negotiate what I call reasonable common sense deals with, with landowners and, and that's what we're seeking to do. Santos is at the forefront of the coal seam gas rush and has struck more than 300 agreements with Queensland landholders over the past five years. What we're doing is producing uh, methane from coal seams at 600 metres or below. So we're not miners. Our footprint at the surface is quite small and absolutely agriculture can coexist with what we do. And I think we've demonstrated that on, on the properties in which we're working. For example, we have uh, one big property in Fairview where we use our coal seam gas water to irrigate forage crops. Wilson HTM senior resources analyst John Young says global demand for gas is likely to continue rising and Australia has many decades worth of supply. So keeping landowners on side is critical. The actual um, um, quantities of the resource are very large. Um, we've seen now on the east coast of Australia three large projects being um, uh, approved and there are going to be tens of billions of dollars invested over the next decade or so to be able to extract the gas, 
turn it into liquefied natural gas and, uh, and ship that to our trading partners in Asia. For Australia, it, it provides a security of supply for energy for a long time to come. So it's a really, really important resource. Also, I think we must, mustn't underestimate the aspect it brings employment, brings jobs, and often these jobs are in, in rural communities as well. The Queensland Government recently announced plans to curb the encroachment of mining onto farming land, and there's mounting public pressure on other state governments to do the same. But there seems little appetite to overturn the long-standing principle that the resources under the ground belong to the people of Australia, especially at a time when the nation could be sitting on a bounty worth hundreds of billions of dollars. You know, I think it's a strong, will be a strong net positive to the whole economy, strong net positive to lowering our carbon footprint, and ultimately it'll bring employment uh, and prosperity in, in Australia. The concern about sovereign risk really comes if the ground rules are changed and they're changed retrospectively. I think that is where um, investors are concerned. They enter into to an arrangement on an understanding and if that is later changed and, and in fact is backdated then that's what's problematic. But the tensions created by the resources boom aren't going away just yet. The Greens plan to introduce a bill into federal parliament this week which would require resource companies to get written approval before entering private property. And others like the Lock the Gate Alliance want to go further, calling for a moratorium on coal seam gas until its social and environmental impact is fully understood. Caught in the middle are the nation's political leaders, trapped in a tussle for power that means they can't offend anybody, but eager for the mining dollars to continue flowing.